Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Pepito Live. And welcome, everyone, wherever you're watching from. Welcome to this show. Uh, amigos, we're very excited because now the, uh, the tour season is arriving in Costa Rica, and we feel all of this excitement happening, people getting ready, people planning, and so forth, and a lot of people wondering uh, what type of activities they may want to do when they are actually visiting Costa Rica, but more so here in Guanacaste, Costa Rica, which is the uh, north west side of the country. So uh, please allow me to welcome everybody to the show. And also, uh, I want to remind everyone that during this very special program, amigos, you are welcome to make any comments via the live section uh, on Facebook or uh, on our uh, YouTube channel. So in the chat section, make any comments, ask any questions, by all means, feel free to uh, do so. And also, if you haven't had the opportunity to subscribe to our channel on YouTube, now is the time to do so. Uh, so Pepito Live on YouTube, uh, you can actually press the subscribe button and also press the little bell to get some reminders for uh, any of our upcoming shows. So that being said, I want to start off uh, by uh, thanking our official uh, partner and sponsor for this very special program today, International Relocation Partner. Uh, I do have the email right there and the website. And uh, International Relocation Partner is actually your expert if you are planning on moving to Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Panama. So please note that very special website, internationalrelocationpartner.com. Pablo Arias and his team are really the reference in terms of moving from abroad into Costa Rica and Central America or out of this region even to other regions of the world. So uh, we're very happy and we thank them for sponsoring this program today. So what we're going to do uh, actually today is we're actually going to be we did a little survey a couple of weeks back and we asked people, what are your favorite activities that you have done or would like to do if you are actually visiting uh, Guanacaste? So what I'm going to be showing you in descending order, starting from number 10 tonight, is uh, what are not my preferred choices, what are actually the public's preferred choices. So that's actually uh, pretty uh, pretty different in terms of an approach. And uh, so we do have some comments coming in. Bonjour, Pepito. I was looking forward to this show. Okay. Uh, pura Vida. Hola, Pura Vida. Terry Gala. Uh, welcome to the show, Terry. And uh, so by all means, feel free to ask your question. So let's jump right into the subject. Uh, so we're going to actually go through these 10 different tours, the most favorite ones. We're going to show some pictures. I'm also going to be showing some a few videos. And also, I'm actually going to be, during the show, giving a few, a couple uh, practical tips in terms of maybe some things you should consider doing when planning your trip to Guanacaste. And uh, so to make sure that uh, you actually uh, end up leaving Costa Rica uh, with some um, pleasant uh, experiences. Okay, so let's jump into it. Number 10. Number 10 is actually um, what came out uh, of our survey is surfing in Tamarindo. So actually, Tamarindo is what I call the little Miami of Costa Rica. It's a beautiful uh, community. It's a younger community. So uh, if that's the type of environment you're looking for, you want something that's more vibrant, a little bit more active, a little bit more fiestas, beautiful long beach, you're into surfing, uh, that is probably one of the preferred destinations actually in Costa Rica. So surfing in Tamarindo has really, um, you know, uh, rated number 10. I'm going to show you just a couple of pictures and... Um, also, uh, also a, a little video. So Tamarindo is actually uh, about an hour and a half from Liberia International Airport. And, you know, I say it's very young in terms of, uh, you know, the, um, the clientele, the sort of goes, the travelers that actually go to Tamarindo. But it's also actually also like an amazing destination for 
uh, young uh, younger families. Um, it's an excellent destination, actually, also to learn how to surf. Uh, so I'm just gonna, you know, be um, kite surfing. Uh, not really kite surfing in Tamarindo, but uh, that is actually, uh, if you want to just like the regular surfing, that's the definitely the place to be. There is a bit of sight, uh, kite surfing in Costa Rica, but we'll keep that for another show. Uh, but Tamarindo would not be the destination uh, for that. So, amigos, uh, let's continue here. Uh, what I did, actually, I was uh, doing a beach tour yesterday. And uh, what we do when we do beach tours, we actually like uh, go from uh, different of the most popular beaches here in the area, in northern Guanacaste area. And so what we did, we did like Playa Flamingo. We went to Playa Conchal, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes. And we actually ended up um, doing... Um, dinner in Ta Tamarindo, and we had the opportunity actually to see like a really cool, I, I call it a fire show, and uh, here's a little video to, uh, to illustrate that. So uh, that's an amazing uh, little fire show, sort of like an impromptu type of fire show directly there uh, on, on the beach. So uh, I wanted to share that very special moment with you. Now, so uh, that was number 10, Tamarindo, okay? Uh, really a young, uh, cool, vibrant, uh, festive type of community and uh, definitely an amazing place. Also in Tamarindo, Amigos excellent shopping okay so that was number number uh 10 let's jump right to number nine immediately here and number nine okay the survey says number nine uh, okay what came up was playa conchal playa conchal actually sort of like means like a seashell seashell beach and uh it's not very far from playa grande actually it's probably a uh, playa grande and playa tamarindo it's probably about a uh, half an hour drive Playa Conchal Seashell Beach is very, they say it's one of the um, second beach of the type in the world. What happens is that all of those like uh, shells, okay, seashells that are broken like in the ocean, they follow natural current and they end up actually in on this beach with the natural flows of the water. So which makes this an amazing beach that's actually composed all of seashells. When you're actually walking on the first part of the beach, you're walking on seashells, pretty exciting. I'm gonna, like, I got a couple of pictures, just give you a little bit of an illustration here, uh, because pictures, I think, do talk a lot. So, you know, this is more like a white sand type of beach. Look at that, you would, you, by looking at this picture, you believe you're on the Caribbean side. If you're looking at the lower portion of this picture on the right-hand side, where you see actually these rocks, that's actually an excellent uh, snorkeling location, an excellent snorkeling location. So you bring your snorkeling gear. And uh, so the, 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 the lower part is actually um, the, the seashell uh, portion of it. And you can see a little bit more here. You can see like, sir, like the granular sort of like uh, section here. And I'm going to show another picture here where I actually put my, uh, my, uh, my slur snorkeling uh, goggles here. And this is a, actually a very, very good illustration of what uh, this is is uh, representing here. So Playa Conchal is absolutely an amazing, it's one of my favorite beaches actually in Costa Rica. I do have a little video for this one that I will share with you right now.
So, amigos, Playa Conchal, uh, definitely, uh, okay, uh, to put on your uh, to-do list if you want something really, like, very different and something really amazing in terms of beaches in Costa Rica. Okay, so we do have a, a, a comment from uh, LR Sealock. Uh, I love Playa Conchal. It's super cool to see and walk on. Absolutely. Also, amigo, I just want to warn you, if you want to visit Playa Conchal, you can actually not drive there anymore so you have to sort of like park into a uh, public uh, sort of environment in Braselito and then walk so you could uh, plan a good 10 to 15 minutes maybe sometimes a little bit more if you're a slow walker to actually get to Playa Conchat but the way to get there is via Braselito that's the only way to get to this very very unique and very special beach so that was number nine amigos and um um, now, number eight. Now, after we've seen some beaches, sometimes we like to have a little drink. Our number eight, the survey says, very unique rum tour. Actually, um, you know, I'm so happy that, uh, you know, we're offering this tour right now. And I want to, I just want to tell people, like, I'm not here. Like, uh, you know, my name is Pepito and I run Costour. I run a tour company. Uh, I'm not there to necessarily promote the tour company. Uh, I'm there today to talk about your favorite tours. But of course, most of those tours um, we are actually offering as a, a tour company. But um, the objective, you know, of sharing this is really what are your preferred choices. Um, so we didn't have a uh, like a local rum tour in the area here in Guanacaste up till maybe two years ago. And then uh, this tour came on, on the market. And I really like it. Uh, I've personally been on some rum tours around the world, different places. I remember Jamaica, places like that. And it's basically uh, rum tours that I've been to in the past. Maybe I didn't pick the right ones, but it was basically just an excuse to get drunk. <laughs> okay. But this is not what that is. This is actually uh, an opportunity to discover how rum is made. Now, rum is made, of course, with sugarcane. We have a lot of sugarcane. It's the, probably the most popular uh, agricultural product here in Guanacaste. So uh, it, it is actually an opportunity to see how the sugarcane is, is transformed into rum and liquor or different types of liquor also and but to also get to taste and experiment the transformation so of course there's a little bit of a drinking uh, involved but that's not what the whole idea is about so now is time to um, show you a few of these pictures before i actually show you uh you know a little video on that here also so you can see like on the right hand side of the picture there is a little bottle the rum that they actually produce here is called sabandi the rum that you could purchase during this rum tour you cannot buy anywhere in costa rica amigo you cannot buy it anywhere else in costa rica beside on this tour okay also what we do like uh in the latter part of the um the tour we actually uh, have an opportunity to do infusions with different fruits different herbs different uh canela like different types of products actually to give your rum a little bit of flavor and to sort of like play and have fun with that and experiment you could actually also infuse the little bottle that we include in the tour package when we actually uh do do this tour and uh, the tour is actually hosted by um like a top rated rum sommelier he looks kind of funny there he's uh having humor with us this is a picture that i've actually taken and uh so that's a really, really cool and amazing tour. If you're uh, interested in, and also like uh, learning different aspects of the, the the traditions and the culture of Costa Rica. So, you know, you're going to discover uh, everything about this, um, but also you're going to discover a lot about the, uh, the, the traditions uh, uh, about this uh, region. So that's pretty cool. And I do have a little promotional video that comes from Costur that I will show. Uh, that we actually also have on our website. And here it is, uh, Rum Tour.
And there we go, amigos, the rum tour. Uh, now, I want to also mention that the location where this rum tour is actually held is also a very uh, historical site. So you actually will get to discover like some really, really interesting uh, elements of uh, the uh, Costa Rican history and the Guanacaste uh, you know, uh, history. Also, I have uh, Dennis who says, I can't wait uh, for the rum tour. And uh, also, like, uh, I have Danny Rood who uh, gave us a little comment and says, Ah, Flor de Cañas rum. Very, very good. Yes, but I just want to mention that uh, probably the Flor de Cañas is probably the most popular rum in Costa Rica. But, amigos, okay, it doesn't come from Costa Rica. Okay, it comes from Nicaragua, actually. But it is very good. And uh, But the, um, the most popular rum produced in Costa Rica is actually called Centenario centenario okay like uh so uh so but florida caña is actually very good the most popular but actually not made from here okay so but sabandi is unique to this tour okay so amigos something that you uh will definitely want to do actually like what we do on that tour there's an opportunity also you saw maybe in the video an opportunity to like uh, personalize your label For example, if you want to buy like a bottle of rum, you want to give it to somebody as a special gift, special anniversary or something, you could write like, my dear Pepito, here's a very special bottle of rum for you. Okay. And uh, you could actually, uh, you could actually do that. So, uh, amigos, so that was number eight. Okay. Now the time for a little, uh, look, a little Pepito tip. Okay. On, uh, you know, planning your tours. What I tell people is that, you know, before you actually like, arrive uh, you know in costa rica try to determine the types of tour you would want to do and i divide them usually in categories so when i have uh, clients who call me and say pepito you know what are what are the tours you're offering we're offering about 20 25 different tours so you know it's pretty complex to go through all of that so what i do is i tell people please tell me what are your objectives first of all are you interested in nature are you interested in adventure Are you interested in uh, culture? And from that, very easy for me to sort of like target and maybe like give you some really good uh, uh, advices that will sort of like fit what your objectives are. Because, uh, you know, if not, you may be disappointed, invest a lot of time in doing some research. So try to have a good idea exactly what you're looking for, what you would like to see, and then sort of like, Um, explore the different opportunities uh, from there, okay? So um, that is actually um, my, my first advice So for today. And amigos, don't be shy, okay? If you do have any comments or uh, questions, okay? I do have like uh, uh, Dennis again, uh, uh, what about uh, uh, hang gliding? No, that's not a very popular activity in Costa Rica. I won't say it doesn't exist. But it definitely not is not an, a popular activity in Costa Rica. So kite surfing, um, I think there's a few places in Costa Rica where they actually they do it. Um, but uh, hang gliding, no. Okay. So uh, really here, this is a surf country. Okay. Let's put it this way. Okay. So now we did the rum tour. Let's go see number seven. The survey says, okay, amazing Cortez waterfall. Uh, Cartes Waterfall is situated between the town of uh, Liberia and Cañas. It's probably the most uh, popular um, waterfall in the area. And uh, I'm going to show you a couple of pictures again. And uh, to the picture board, actually, uh, Cortes is probably about 80 feet high by about 80 feet wide. Okay. It is... Um, It is an amazing waterfall, uh, a, an excellent place to actually swim, like uh, to actually access the waters there is sort of like um, almost like a beach, like gradual slope into the water. So it's actually very safe for uh, people with mobility issues, for children, that kind of stuff. Okay, so that is Cartes Waterfall. There's some movies been produced there. Um uh, And uh, so you could actually access a secondary waterfall not too far, which is a little walk. And uh, if you're into like very light hiking, you could actually uh, via some trails and um, 
actually access the upper like a uh, higher portion of the waterfall, like you could see here. Um, so these are some people that, uh, you know, I've actually guided there. And uh, so you could see uh, the young lady there having a peek to the lower portion uh, uh, of the waterfall. It's actually also like a very charming destination. And uh, here's our friend here on the tour actually uh, proposing uh, to his... Uh, to to his to his girlfriend so one of those memorable moments that uh, that we've uh, had on some of our tours so once again uh now i don't have videos for all of the um all of the uh, all of the tours uh, all of the activities that we're describing but i do have a few There we go. So now uh, let's move on very quickly here. And so we had the waterfalls. Now you can't come to Costa Rica, okay, without fishing, right? Number six, fishing. Listen, there's a wide variety of fishing opportunities in Costa Rica, and it popped up on the survey that we did. Uh, now uh, in the the uh, the Guanacaste area, the most popular area for fishing. Uh, and the most success, successful area probably for fishing, of course, is the Bay of Papagayo. Okay, so fishing in the Bay of Papagayo. Now, if you love Mahi Mai, uh, that's definitely like one of the most uh, famous and popular catch around here. So uh, here's this lady kissing her uh, prize of, of, of the day. Uh, so, amigos, you can't go wrong. Okay. Um, there's some really, really good fishing tours. A lot of uh, tours are half a day. A lot of tours are also full day. You could do like a half a day in the Bay of Papagayo, or you could go deep sea fishing much further ahead uh, in the ocean uh, out of the coast. And uh, I'm absolutely convinced that you're going to have like a, a time of a lifetime. Okay, so fishing is number six. Um, now, let's go and have a look and see what number five says. Okay, so uh, when I mentioned earlier, like adventure, culture, uh, you know, nature. So I, I think that probably one of the most popular uh, activities in terms of adventure is the four in one adventure. The four in one adventure is an adventure that's actually being held on Tenorio Volcano, which is actually the widest volcano in diameter in Costa Rica. Not the highest, but the widest. And this actually like includes like tubing, horseback riding, zip lining, rappelling, hot springs, all in one day. So amigos, if you're coming to the area for not a very, very long time, that's an excellent uh, uh, opportunity because you get to do everything. And also like from a uh, bang for the buck type of perspective, okay, um, probably also one of the best deals out there because you're actually doing the four activities in one day. Therefore, really, really interesting from uh, a prize uh, perspective, okay? So uh, I do have a couple of pictures uh, on here again. I'm going to show you. Uh, here's tubing, um, horseback riding, and you know, those activities are not just like five minutes on a horse. Okay. Like they're, you know, this is a complete day. Okay. So you're going to be like an hour or so on a horse. You're going to do some repelling. You're going to do, you know, the zip line, like probably eight different, like uh, amazing, uh, zip lines. Um, and, uh, this is a very, very professional site, excellent guides, very safe, Okay, and uh, definitely like uh, an experience that you will, uh, you know, never forget uh, in your life. And uh, so, uh, amigos, uh, four in one adventure on the Rincon Volcano is definitely uh, something to put on your list. Okay, if you're seeking, uh, you know, a good thrill and uh, a good adventure. Here's a little video. <laughs>
There you go, amigos. That was the uh, full day adventure. And we call it like the four in one adventure on the Rincon de la Vieja Volcano. Okay, certainly made uh, our survey today. And uh, let's see if we have any more uh, comments here or questions. Uh, Danny Rue talks about Catalina Lodge. Wonderful. Uh, Danny, I'm happy that you sort of like mentioned that because, uh, amigos, if you're looking, uh, I was actually there with my Carolyn, okay, to the Carolina Lodge, I think about two years ago. If you're looking for like an experience to like visit a really typical, authentic lodge in Costa Rica where you want to uh, like connect with the peace, relaxation, uh, nature, uh, authenticity, okay, uh, I didn't plan to put that on the show today, so I don't have any pictures to show you, but Google it, Carolina Lodge, okay? It's uh, it's not in Guaracase, actually, it's in the uh, uh, Alihuela province. It's just north of Upala, but it's not very far. It's about an hour, uh, almost two-hour drive, I would say, from uh, Playa del Coco area, probably like an hour and a half from Liberia Airport, but very, very good uh, comment and suggestion um, you know, from uh, from our friend uh, Danny. So, um, amigos, let's see here. I think I have a, like another um, little uh, tip. Okay, tip. Okay, to plan your tours. Okay, amigos, I tell people. Okay, don't try to do everything. Okay, sometimes people will write me. Okay, they're here for two weeks. They have a list of twenty things they want to do. Um, what I recommend that you do is okay. Like once again. Try to target, try to determine your objectives, okay? Determine the region, stick to a region. Don't try to see all of Costa Rica in two weeks. Amigo, what's going to happen is you're just going to rush it out. And in the end, okay, you're, you're, go you're going to see probably like a lot of things, but you're not going to appreciate a lot of things. So take your time. Take your time to enjoy. Take your time to focus. Take your time to savor, to explore the moment. And um, and come back another time to do the rest, okay? Because there's so many, so many things. I'll be honest with you. Like, I've been working in tourism here for eight years, and I'm still discovering some things, some new things. So, uh, you know, relax, take it easy, enjoy, okay? I mean, I'm a tour operator. I could tell you, my God, do 10 tours. No, don't do 10 tours. Do four tours, five tours, and enjoy them. Take the time, okay? Because... Uh, you're going to set yourself up for disappointment if you try to see everything, okay? So that's just a little Pepito uh, advice, okay? So we've talked about the four and one. And number four, the survey says today, okay, the cultural tour of Costa Rica. Cultural tour of Costa Rica, okay, if you want to know more about actually like Guanacaste is, um, we call it like the uh, the cultural capital of Costa Rica. There's a lot of history here. There's a lot of uh, traditions that are still present. There's still a lot of people, a lot of communities here living the traditional lifestyle of Costa Rica. Um, and it's really amazing to discover that. You know, remember, okay, Costa Ricans are some of the happiest people in the world. We also have some of the um, highest life expectancy in the world. And there are reasons for that. Okay, there are reasons for that. And this tour is actually probably the best way to learn about that and appreciate that and discover that. And, uh, and so we're offering offering that tour to explain like what is Pura Vida? Okay, it's not just a slogan for tourists. Okay, there's a philosophy behind that. So what does it really mean? How does it how do the Costa Ricans actually live that apply that? Uh, in their daily lives. So this is what this tour uh, is all about. So, of course, during this tour, um, you know, we, we have fun doing it. We get you involved. We show you different elements of, 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 the, uh, of the culture. And uh, uh, we'll see some people that, you know, have the traditional costumes. We'll show you how to make tortillas. Um, you'll see also how we transform uh, the sugar cane uh, during that tour again. But we also make some like surprise stops along the way to see local artists. Uh, this is our friend here. He's a descendant of Chorotega Indians doing right in front of you authentic, okay, authentic Guanacaste 
Costa Rican indigenous pottery. Okay, I wanted to tell you something, talking about this pottery. If you're in Playa del Coco, Tamarindo, Flamingo, all of those places, Samara, you're going to see like a lot of uh, sales people on the beach trying to sell you pottery. Okay, I hate to bust your bubble, but most of that pottery is probably made, I'm sorry, in Nicaragua. Okay, so the real traditional, uh, here's a little tip, and there's a little pepito tip. The real traditional um, Guanacaste Costa Rican um, pottery has the colors you see on the screen right now. Black, dark blue, uh, dark green. Uh, why? Because those colors are all like earth tones because all the colorants, all the paint to do these, okay, actually is all made by hand. Okay, the artists, they make their paint. Okay, so like sort of like a little reddish color also. Where the pottery actually coming from Nicaragua is actually like uh, more vibrant colors. Okay, and and it's mass made. They're not individually made. Okay, so sorry, sorry Nicaragua. Okay, but I'm there to uh, say it as it is. Okay, and uh, some of the things that we do like on the cultural tour also, we stop to see like, the you know, some of the local people, how they live, how they work and stuff. So that being said, okay, time for a little video. If I can find it here, cultural tour of Costa Rica with Costur. There we go, amigos, the cultural tour of Costa Rica. Uh, really, if you want to know more about the real Costa Rica, something that you should really look into. Now, okay, let's uh, let's move on. And actually, there was a comment here from, uh, okay, uh, Gio, uh, Gio Canda, okay, uh, Navarrete. And she says, that's a great trip. I didn't know the difference between Costa Rica and uh, Nicaraguan pottery. Okay, I got surprised. So, gracias, uh, okay, Giocanda, por el, el comentario. Hasta luego, amiga. Okay, uh, so now uh, we did the cultural tour. I'm going down the list here. Okay, the next one, probably I have to be honest, okay, uh, and say this is probably one of my favorite tours. Amigos, if you're, okay, into nature and you're coming into Guanacaste to see animals, nature, that kind of thing. Okay. The two upcoming tours. Okay. I'm happy they did the survey um, because, okay, I think the survey is right. These are probably the two best tours where, okay, you won't be disappointed. Uh, now, so the next one is, okay, in terms of animal tours, number three in the survey. Okay. Palo Verde boat tour. Okay. Amigos, okay. Now, Palo Verde boat tour, that's a little bit like Heinz ketchup. <laughs> okay, how can I say that? Okay, because there are a lot of tours on the Tempisque River, okay, and uh, you know, and they call it Palo Verde, Palo Verde tours, okay. But if you want the, the original, okay, the authentic. Tour on the Rio Tempisque to see animals and crocodiles and that kind of stuff. Okay, 
You, you can look it up actually in the uh, website for Costour. Okay. It's called the Palo Verde Boat Tour. Amigos, the other ones, they're fair imitations, but they're not quite okay good as okay this one. Okay. Um, now, that is a tour that lasts about an hour and a half on the Rio Tempisque, which is actually the longest river in, uh, in Costa Rica. And actually, that river also has a lot of history that we talk about during the tour. I don't want to reveal everything right now. Okay. So um, that's really an amazing, okay, uh, amazing, amazing tour. Okay. So that river, Rio Tempisque, is like right beside the National Park of uh okay of palo verde okay palo verde by the way okay um is actually a tree okay so it means like basically the green tree okay so um now what can you see during that tour okay a couple of pictures and i do have a little bit of it of a video also um now depending on the, the time of the year of course okay uh is mother nature so you could see different things okay but uh, definitely a good area actually to see like uh, crocodiles uh, the crocodile that we have here in the rio tempisque in costa rica is called the american crocodile uh known scientifically under the name of acutus okay and uh, it's actually uh the biggest crocodile in the world okay some of these crocodiles could be like four meters long five meters long and there's a lot of history about crocodiles here okay and uh and uh if you come on a tour with me with pepito i will tell you a lot of amazing facts about crocodile also a great um you know environment to see the famous howler monkey the white face monkey capuchin monkeys as some people call them along the river there uh they're like the smartest monkey among all the monkey families we have in costa rica okay uh, the scarlet macau in that area uh this is an, uh, another amazing bird okay the spoon uh, bill okay uh so we call it la spatula rosada and uh, that's an amazing bird also and many and many many others okay a lot of migratory birds actually uh, you know, along that river. They come to the river actually from the inner portions of the park actually to just like uh, basically feed themselves. Okay, so uh, a little video about Palo Verde. Here it is, amigos. Ciao. <laughs> Okay, so that is Palo Verde Boat Tour. Now, uh, I want to mention something, okay? During the video, you saw, like, uh, the people there preparing the food. I want to say something. When I when I say that this is the real authentic tour, okay, uh, it's a, the, the, quality, uh, the quality service, uh, the experience, uh, everything, uh, customer service, okay? But the food, okay, we serve, okay? at the end of this tour is an authentic meal and not only it's casera it's homemade but actually the family that actually runs this 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 tour company palo verde boat tour okay actually they produce like most of the things you would eat during this tour like the rice the frioles okay um the the vegetables the fruit all come from their farm okay so to me that's just so amazing and fantastic and it's all good OK, I mean, if you want a real authentic meal in Costa Rica, this is probably one of the best meals you will find. OK, in Guanacaste, I'm telling you, we eat very well in Costa Rica. There's other like great, you know, local foods and stuff. But what you will eat at uh, Palo Verde doing this tour is just absolutely amazing. So that's number three. 
And uh, number two from the survey is uh, one of our most popular tours is the slot discovery tour and more because during the slot discovery tour, we also visit a butterfly garden. We also bring people swimming in the famous uh, Blue River, Rio Celeste. Uh, and that is a tour that's offered in the uh, Tenerio uh, volcano area. So what you would see, for example, in Palo Verde and you would see on the slot tour would be totally different, okay? One completes the other. Why? Because they're in different geographical areas and they're, they are in different microclimates, okay? So because the slot tour is on Tenorio Volcano, the Tenorio Volcano is like in the tropical forest, uh, so the rainforest, if you could call it. So that brings us different type of birds, different type of animals, different type of mammals, different type of flowers, different types of everything. So two totally different experiences. And that being said, uh, you know, now I'm going to show you like a couple of pictures. This is actually uh, a picture I've taken uh, three or four years ago uh, that's become quite famous all across Costa Rica. And uh, so, you know, what we see the slots, we see the little frog, uh, sometimes also the red-eyed uh, tree frog. We see the butterfly garden and so forth. And uh, so that's just an amazing place. So let's have a look at the little video. Okay, amigos, that was the slot discovery uh, adventure, and I call it and more, okay, because of the experience that we live with the butterfly garden and going to Rio Celeste for a little swim in the end and so forth. So for a nature tour, I remember when we first started Costur, like some years ago, when people wanted to see slots in area, the area, we would bring people like from Guanacaste to Monteverde. And you know what? I don't want to put Monteverde down, amigos, okay? But the chance of seeing a slot going there or to Arenal are probably realistically and honestly about 5%, okay? But uh, on Tenorio Volcano, on this tour, amigo, I will tell you the probability is not 100%, but very, very close to there. But remember, okay, nature tours are like, coordinated with mother nature right she's the boss so it could happen someday where you have like a little bit of bad luck but generally speaking okay you will not be disappointed with an experience with an experience uh, like this okay so um now another little pepito tip i'm gonna get my banner here you know i don't know if you realize amigo but you know what? i'm doing this like all on my own so sometimes you know I got I to gotta figure out where I put stuff. Uh, and uh, so, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, sometimes I get a little bit confused because I'm trying to talk and, you know, engage with you all the time and also see what the hell I'm doing at the same time. OK, so now this is the last practical tip. OK, um, the, so, OK, tip to plan your tours. OK, amigos. OK, um, I talk about this from time to time and some people like. Um, you know, 
uh, say, there he goes, there he goes again, okay? But by all means, uh, amigos, if you're like visiting a country, you're visiting Costa Rica, you're visiting Guanacaste, okay? By all means, okay, book your tours with, okay, uh, legal operators. I was in Tamarindo yesterday on a beach tour and I was listening actually um, to, 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 to someone actually asking um, this guy on the street to bring him somewhere with his car, uh, you know, to show him something, some, uh, anyway, some tour he wanted to do. Um, y you know, by all means, amigos, okay, deal with the professionals, okay? If you, I mean, I'm not saying there's, everybody's a bad person out there, you know, but if you're like booking a tour, you're booking a taxi service, you're booking a transfer with somebody that's not a legal operator, you know, you may end up with, like with some with some bad surprises okay now people say well you know how do we know we don't know you know so i prepared this little graphic okay for you guys here today okay public transportation amigos in costa rica okay this is for your protection and your security okay so you know there's a lot of people that think they're taxi drivers in costa rica there's a lot of people that think they're tour operators in costa rica because they have a van or a white van or whatever okay i will tell you the difference okay now what you have on the right hand side of the uh the screen right now okay legal taxis in costa rica amigos are red with yellow triangles okay some guy is on the street and yells taxi taxi you want a taxi okay and doesn't have like a red car with a yellow triangle. This is just an individual hustling, okay, to sell his services, okay? I'm not saying he's a bad person. Could be, could be not, okay? But amigos, you have no protection, okay? You don't know what you're walking into. And I actually know some horror stories. I don't want to talk about that today. That's a different subject completely. Same thing with tours, okay? Ah, oh, your second neighbor has a nice white van and blah, 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 okay? And you know what? He's coming, uh, you know, for a holiday in Costa Rica for three, four months a year. He start, you know, he's all of a sudden, he's in business creating a tour company for three months, okay? Amigo, he is not legal, okay? So that has implications on insurance on, on, on many, 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 many aspects. So please support the legal operators, okay? Legal operators will have a van, will have a vehicle that will be written Turismo on it. That sign is actually painted, okay? Requested by the government, it's painted on. So if somebody comes to you and says, no, 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 yeah, yeah, no, but I'm legal. But, you know, it's not, it's not the individual who's certified, it's the vehicle. If some guy shows up with a white car or whatever yellow color or whatever color car he has as a taxi and say, yeah, yeah, I'm a taxi, but you know what? My car is being painted. Well, you know what? It's that the car is certified, not the person. Okay. Well, there's, there's certifications for the people working in tourism industry also, but that's a different subject. And same thing with the vans. Okay. Don't have Turismo on it. Okay. Okay. Not a real operator. Sorry to bust your bubble, but that's the reality of it. Okay. Uh, so, uh, let's go see before, uh, you know, um, if there's any like uh, comments, questions, that's a great trip. I didn't know the difference. Okay, that's uh, okay. Geoconda talking about the, okay, about the, the pottery. Okay, so we talked about the, the slot discovery tour. And what I want to do before we leave, I actually want to give you like a surprise tour. Okay, something like, uh, you know, that wasn't in the survey. Okay, that I think that you should know about uh, because a little a little pepito tip. So the last, uh, okay, the last, uh, uh, the winner, okay, the winner of the survey, actually Rincon de la Vieja Hot Spring. I was sort of like surprised because that's a, it's a popular location. It's a very popular tour, but I thought like a nature tour, an adventure tour would be like number one. But in the survey we did, that's actually what came up. So that's what I'm presenting. Okay, Rincon Volcano Hot Spring. I mean, there's a lot of hot, like beautiful, beautiful hot springs in Costa Rica, uh, like in many of the places. Uh, first of all, to have like a hot spring, you need to have an active volcano. I don't know if you realize that, but so Rincon de, Rincon de la Vieja uh, Volcano is actually an active volcano. And you know what? There's like, uh, you know, other communities, like, for example, Arenal is very well known for like hot springs. I have a lot of people say, Pepito, bring us to, you know, we want to go to Arenal for hot springs, hot springs, Arenal, Arenal. And you know what? I, not, I don't want to put down Arenal, but I <laughs> down, I don't want to put Arenal down, but I will. Okay. In a sense, I'm going to tell you that there's a lot of, Arenal is beautiful, but Arenal is also very um, manicured. Let's put it this way. 
very beautifully manicured, but not necessarily the real authentic experience. So the, the type of experience that I like to offer as a tour operator, or as a tour guide, are the authentic experiences. What you will see in the Rincon de la Vieja hot spring is a real authentic environment where the hot springs are actually uh, offered, okay? A little hanging bridge. You can see like Rio Negro, the river there, okay? Like there, there's not a bar at the end of the, there's not a McDonald's at the end of the uh, hot spring pool there, okay? It's the real, real, real thing. If you want to relax, connect with nature, okay? The uh, hot springs on the Rincon de la Vieja Volcano, I'm, I'm happy in a way it rated number one uh, because that's just a, 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 an amazing, an amazing place. Uh, so, um, so that are the 10, okay? Um, hey, Walter, como estas, amigo? How are you? Okay. Um, so those are the top 10, okay? But there's many, many, many other things, uh, you know, to, uh, to see, okay, in Guanacaste, in Costa Rica. I mean, you could spend a lifetime here and you'll still discover some things and see some new things. What I want to say is that I do have like a little, like a hidden feature like as uh, one place that's a more like of a surprise element uh, during the show today i call it the hidden treasures okay now amigos and rio perdido miravallais volcano which is situated between rincon de la vieja and tenorio volcano is an active volcano called miravallais and i put this down because uh it's not very popular a lot of people don't know about this place now rio perdido is a river of course okay it's the lost river and uh, the river, what's fascinating about it, it's, it's a hot spring, okay? But uh, Rincon de la Vieja, like the hot spring you just saw, they're tubs, okay? The water is channeled from the, the inner portion of the, the volcano. What at Rio Perdido is the river is actually the hot spring. That's what's just like so amazing about it. Here's a picture, okay? So total connection with nature. This is a river. That river, that water you're actually seeing on the screen is all warm, okay? So that's just like, to me, it's just so amazing and so original and so authentic. Uh, so uh, that's about an hour and 45 minutes from, you know, Playa del Coco area, about 30, you know, an hour away from Liberia Airport, uh, you know, 45 minutes uh, away from Liberia, so Rio Perdido, okay, is my little surprise, okay, uh, gem, okay. Now, Rio Perdido is also a hotel, um, you know, what you could actually do, okay, you could actually go there and pay a fee, okay, and and like, uh, you know, you could go there overnight, of course, they have like beautiful, I was there with Carolyn, beautiful rooms, beautiful, beautiful, relaxing, romantic place uh, with all different type of pools around it. Uh, there's a... A spa in there also, but you actually own, could only go for a day and uh, pay a fee and access the facil facility with lockers, the restaurant, uh, the different types of pools that are there. So you could go from the hot springs to the pool, relax, have a drink at the bar and so forth. It's just uh, an amazing, an amazing place. So before we close, amigos, I'm just going to uh, see if there's any more comments or questions. Feel free to do so before I close. So once again, uh, you know, uh, LR Siloc, amazing. We'll check this out this winter. Looks absolutely gorgeous. Uh, LR Siloc, you won't be disappointed, I think, with any of the uh, tours we've uh, presented during the show today. Now, you know, pick whatever operator you want, okay? Um, you know, you'll, I'll be very happy if you call us at Coast Tour, but by all means, amigo, remember, okay, try to do it the proper way, you know, stick with the illegal, uh, the, the legal operators and not the illegal operators, okay? And uh, once again, before we finish the show, I want to thank, okay, our uh, sponsor, International Relocation Partner, Pablo Arias is an amazing person. Uh, you know, I'll be honest with you, we're starting to get some sponsors during the show, but I will not get a sponsor on the show if I doesn't feel it's a good match with the show and it's not somebody of good reputation that will serve you well. Okay, so uh, yes, we're happy to have them as sponsors, but we're happy to have them as sponsors because they're considered uh, among the best, okay, in the industry. So Pablo Arias, he's the owner, the operator, the, the director general of this operation. He's a very uh, authentic, honest person, 
and uh, you will not be disappointed in him. Any questions you have for international moving into Costa Rica, Central America, you know, give him uh, give him a call or write to him, internationalrelocationpartner.com. Pablo Arias is uh, absolutely uh, a good reference for you. So, amigos, that's pretty well it for the show today. Uh, tourist season is coming along. So take into uh, consideration all these very uh, good uh, tips that we've given you during the show. Keep watching. If you haven't had the opportunity to do so, feel free to um, go and subscribe to our Pepito Live channel on YouTube, amigos. Okay? So that was it. Thank you for watching. Okay? You've been uh, increasingly, um, you know, uh, more and more people increasingly watching the show every week. Really, really happy about that. And uh, we're going to continue trying to find some interesting material for you uh, during the uh, upcoming uh, season. So we have some really, really cool uh, subjects coming along. Okay, so amigos. So that was it for today. Okay, thank you for watching Pepito Live. Ciao.